Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a white, black and red or Mardu colored Angels, Demons and Dragons deck featuring Kalia of the Vast as our commander. This 4 mana 2-2 flyer says whenever it attacks an opponent directly, so don't make the mistake of attacking a Planeswalker, we can put an Angel, Demon or Dragon creature card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking that opponent. So Kalia can cheat some very expensive creatures onto the battlefield. Ideally we're looking for creatures that have entered the battlefield abilities or maybe an effect when they damage the opponent. So Kalia doesn't synergize with attack triggers since the creature's already tapped and attacking and won't attack again until the following turn. Now that being said, have broken the deck down into a few different categories and by far the largest one here are the actual creatures we're going to try to cheat onto the battlefield. And as you can see, the average mana value is probably around 7, so we're definitely getting a lot of mileage out of that ability. Then we also have some ways to protect Kalia, whether that's a discard spell to maybe take away an instant speed removal spell from the opponent, or ways like Giver of Runes and Skrelv that can also keep protecting Kalia turn after turn. Then we've got a bit of mana acceleration, mainly two mana ramp artifacts, so we can try to play Kalia on turn three. And then we've got ways of giving Kalia haste, so we can immediately attack with Kalia the turn we play her, so we don't have to wait that extra turn and expose it to removal unnecessarily. Then we've got some removal ourselves, some spot removal spells, and then some sweepers to maybe deal with more aggressive decks that can try and go underneath us, especially if they also have cheap answers to Kalia. Then we've got some card draw effects, some looting effects to maybe discard some of the expensive cards if we're unable to cast them or cheat them and play with Kalia. And then some more long-term effects that can draw cards turn after turn. And then of course the author Kalia Zenith Seeker is a great addition for this deck as well. And then last but not least, the miscellaneous section has a few reanimate effects, so we can bring back creatures we discarded perhaps. And then we've got Ishin, which also plays quite well with Kalia, doubling the attack trigger, so we can now cheat two creatures onto the battlefield. Sneak attack also rounds out the deck perfectly, as a very similar effect to Kalia, cheating those expensive creatures onto the battlefield in case Kalia gets answered. So that's the deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our creatures. We've got at 5 mana Lara Dombringer, can pump up our author angels as well, giving them plus one plus one and lifelink. Terror of the Peaks can deal a ton of damage when more expensive creatures enter the battlefield, dealing damage equal to their power to any target. Lisa, another big lifelinking angel that can return our dead creatures back to our hand. We've got Burning Rune Demon, letting us tutor up two cards. Bottom gets to choose one that we get to put into our hand, the other one goes into our graveyard. So it's nice to have, let's say, two one mana removal spells with both Source to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt, so we can potentially tutor up both with a demon and then we'll get at least one of them. Then a Crab Abomination, another new addition from Modern Horizons 3. When it enters, we'll randomly find a card from the opponent that we get to cast for free. Then a Demon Lord Balzan Lock can also provide a lot of card advantage when it enters. Ancient Copper Dragon, one of the more exciting ones if it manages to hit the opponent, as we now get to make a ton of treasure tokens to empty the rest of our hand. Arakdos, Patron of Chaos, can also have a nice end of turn trigger, making the opponent either sacrifice permanence or we get to draw. Aurelia is one of those creatures that has an attack trigger, but at 6 mana it's still realistic to hard cast, and then if we do ever get to untap or team with Aurelia and attack again, Kalia also gets to trigger an additional time, so it's still definitely worth it here. Then we've got the Ancient Gold Dragon, making a bunch of 1-1 tokens if we hit the opponent. Angel of the Ruins can deal with artifacts and enchantments. Sephara can make our other creatures with flying indestructible, so it can also help protect Kalia, as sometimes the opponent might have a reach creature or flying creature themselves that can trade for Kalia. Now with Sephara we can immediately make Kalia indestructible, so we can attack again on the following turn. Then Seros Emissary can have a very similar effect if we name Creature, because now our opponent won't be able to block any of our creatures since they have protection from creatures, but occasionally can also name Instant if we're afraid of removal, or maybe Planeswalker if that's what we're worried about. Then the Ancient Brass Dragon can help reanimate our creatures from the graveyard. Balefire Dragon, if it hits the opponent, can deal 6 to all their creatures, so that can be a nice one-sided board wipe. Dragon Mage, a way to refill our hand if we're empty-handed by making each player draw 7 cards. Then there's Terror of Mount Velas, giving our team double strike when it enters, a great way to close out the game. 
The Balrog, also pretty good. If it uh, dies, it still gets to take out something from the opponent. Avacyn will give our entire board indestructible, so it can also be quite backbreaking against certain strategies. The Brute Lord gives us another tutor effect that we can cast with Convoke. Razakath, an 8 8 Flying Trample, that can pay 2 life and sack a creature to search our library for any card and put it in hand. And then we've got another big demon with Villas, which will draw us a card whenever we lose life for each point of life lost. So if the opponent attacks us, we might be drawing a ton of cards with this, and then also has a nice ability. And then a Gristlebrand, 7 7 Flying Lifelink, can pay 7 to draw 7. So that can also be a great way to stabilize just by putting a 7 power Lifelinker on the battlefield with Kalia. And then, of course, just activating it once is usually enough to win the game. And then our protection, we've already covered Giver of Runes and Skrelv. And then our discard effects include Duress for non-creature cards, we've got Inquisition for cheaper spells, and then Thoughtseize is kind of all-purpose. And then our ramp cards include Jada. Now Jada only makes extra mana for angels, so it doesn't help cast Kalia since that's a human cleric, but it can still maybe ramp out some other angels and it's an early play for the deck, which otherwise doesn't do too much in the early turns. Then we've got our ramp artifacts with Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, the new Solar Transformer as well, and the Iron Crag. And then our haste effects include a Lava Spur Boots, can equip for one mana, giving Ward one as well. And then the Swiftwood Boots also gives Hexproof, so that's also part of our protection package. Then a Bitter Union can discard and draw, can also maybe set up our reanimation synergies, and can sacrifice for one mana to give the team haste. Then the Coyote with Plot can also come down in future turns to give Kalia haste. We've got the Reckless Stormseeker as a werewolf. And then finally Rising of the Day, giving our creatures haste, as well as Legendaries one extra power. And then our removal includes, as we mentioned, Swords and Lightning Bolt. Could also play Fatal Push since we have plenty of fetch lines to enable Revolt. Then Go for the Throat and Heartless Act at 2 mana. Rip Apart is pretty versatile, can also hit artifacts and enchantments. Then a few sweepers, including the new Toxic Deluge. Path of Peril can take care of smaller creatures until we cleave it for 6 mana. And then a Deafening Clarion is also flexible, can also give our team a lifelink without wiping the board if we're just in a racing situation. And then our card draw effects include Faithless Looting, can also flash it back to draw and discard too. We've got Thrilling Discovery, which also gains a bit of life. Black Market Connections can make treasure, draw cards, and make shapeshifters at the cost of life. Frex and Arena can also draw at the cost of one life each turn. Fable can help us loot, and then the Shaman can also help us ramp. And then Kalia, as we mentioned, can also find additional demons, dragons, and angels. And then the miscellaneous section we've pretty much covered with our two reanimation effects. Unburial Rides also good to discard since it's cheaper to flash back. Then Sneak Attack to sneak expensive creatures onto the battlefield. Can also activate it in the opponent's end step so the creature will persist throughout our next turn. And then a Shin to double our attack triggers, which mainly include Kalia. And then our mana base also includes the new Arena of Glory, a way to exert it to give our creatures haste. So that's another way of giving Kalia haste that the opponent may not have been expecting, especially if we can hold it in hand for a few turns. And then uh, we've got plenty of mana fixing here with lots of dual lands. We've got all the fetch lands except for Misty Rainforest, which is not too helpful in a Mardu deck. And those can get our various shock lands, as well as the surveil lands, which can give us a nice bit of card selection, maybe help fill the graveyard for our reanimation synergies as well. And then uh, the usual suspects, as well as Cavern of Souls to maybe make some of our creatures uncounterable against blue decks. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing Grixis with Nicol Bolas. So this is going to be a tough matchup. Our opponent's likely to have some interaction. This hand is somewhat promising just because of sneak attack, although we do need to find red mana for it. And then the boots can maybe offer some utility. So it's a risky if we don't hit our land drops, but with the surveil, I'm more hopeful. And we already see them declining a Shielder's Edict, so that's not good news. Fable, not a bad draw. So we've got Boots into Fable into Sneak Attack. The rest are gonna punch a hole in our game plan here. Wouldn't be shocked to see them take Sneak Attack if they have answers for Kalia. That's gonna leave us with some clunky cards in hand. Although Fable's also pretty powerful. Takes Fable. Can play the boots, but don't have high hopes for those uh, actually working. Opponent needs to tap out, and we need to have 5 mana available before we can attack with Kalia. And then Polluted Delta getting a Rat Surveil land. And then we can still play Jada. I guess now I can give Jada haste. 
Seems worthwhile. So we can get black red since I cannot get an extra white source. Hit for two. And then with a land we could actually play a Lyra next turn. Probably not the best matchup for Sarah's Emissary, as the opponent's likely to have other answers in the form of instants or sorceries. Did find the land. So yeah, I could try Lyra. Let me start by attacking. Could also just play Kalia and have that removed. Sneak attack is always an option. But uh, don't mind testing out the waters with Lyra. And then let me get red-white. So we have more red for sneak. And then now with an extra land we could also go Kalia, equip the boots. Opponent did have shoot the sheriff. And yeah, no outlaws in hand. So if they tap out for Nicol Bolas we can maybe set up Kalia, that's the hope. They already have a pretty full graveyard for Search for Skanta. Maybe they're delving a card draw spell. Eh, Pun keeps up appearances here. So we'll hit for two, play sneak attack. And then they'll likely have to counter the enchantment. And then I still need a land for Kalia with boots, but no, sneak attack resolves. So that could be pretty fun. Opponent making a shark. Could have traded for Jada. But I guess they didn't want to tap out. Ascanta transforms. So we've got two sneak activations with two red sources here. And then we probably want to time it in the opponent's end step. Ancient Brass Dragon unlikely to connect. But again, Sarah's Emissary probably not at his best here. Although I guess it is a way to give protection so the Brass Dragon can actually connect. Assuming they don't have another removal spell in hand. So this is a tough one. Razakath being able to tutor up whatever we want by sacking Jada could be nice. Alright, let's get rid of the Emissary. Just feels like they have instant speed removal, so it's never gonna do much for me. We're down to 12, find a land. So I could also still play Kalia, but then I don't really want to move the boots. So I think it's Probably just pass with two sneak activations available. And then we can maybe tutor something at instant speed with Arasakath if needed. If they try and transform Nicol Bolas, then I might have to respond with sneak, put in Arasakath, sack Jada, get like a source to plowshares or some two mana removal, and then we can still cast it in response. Alright, opponent goes all out. So, step one, I think, is still put in Rosakath, since with Ancient Brass Dragon we would much prefer to actually attack with. So then I have to put it in play in the end step. Opponent had the Soul Shatter. This is 8 mana, this is 7. Okay, so that will resolve. Still interested in doing this. Now we could also just get something else to sneak into play, of course. Avacyn doesn't help, Gristlebrand, I'm pretty low on life. Although if it can actually block, that would be great. Just don't have high hopes for it. Broodlord can tutor up something else after sneaking it in, so that's probably even better. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of options here. But I think I'm leaning Broodlord just to play it safe. Sneak it in. And then I could also sack the Broodlord instead of Razakath itself. And get something like a... Uh, Go for the throat, I guess. And cast it on Nicol Bolas. Sag the Broodlord. And 
block a shark, or do we care more about the Iconoclast? Yeah, let's block Iconoclast, the shark's tapped anyway. So as the dust settles, we still have a brass dragon we can maybe put to use. As it turns out, putting in Gristlebrain might have worked out better, as we could have blocked to gain seven, and then still drawn seven cards. Potent gets a lightning bolt, but they are tapped out. Sneak happens. And then now we need a good hit with the Ancient Brass Dragon, and we can use Kalia instead of sneaking it in if we want to. That seems better. Although if we end up putting in Razaketh, I guess having mana to cast additional tutored cards could be fun. But uh, yeah, let's go for Kalia. And then we just need a good roll on the Brass Dragon. A 10, okay. So I can get back Jada, and then Broodlord seems okay. Could get Emissary, but again, might get removed. So I think I'm liking Jada plus Broodlord, since if I get Razakath, I don't have a lot of life to work with. And at least uh, these provide some immediate value. And then I can get Source to Plowshares, maybe. Or I could get something more expensive, but Swords can still maybe clear the Shark to set up the Brass Dragon again. And that gives me a bit of insurance, since I can always Swords my own creature to gain life. So it's pretty versatile here. Reanimate is a little scary when we're at 7. But yeah, whenever you get to tutor your entire deck, there's just a million options available. Could have maybe considered moving the boots, but then I have to convoke swords instead of being able to block with Jada. And uh, the Brass Dragon is probably the creature we care about the most. I'm empty-handed, so even if they replay Nicol Bolas, that's fine. Bone's gonna go digging with Ascanta. So yeah, we probably had some better sequences available, like we mentioned with Gristlebrand, since they didn't seem to have answers to it. Opponent pushes Jada. That's fine, can still Swords. And Infernal Grasp, okay. So they're on the B-Town plan. Do they leave the Shark token back to block Brass Dragon? They don't. Well, I guess they're just trying to bolt me to death. So I can either Swords my own creature to gain two, or just the shark makes more sense. And then bolt isn't lethal. And then next turn we attack for nine, and that's game. Awesome. Close one here against Nicol Bolas. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kinon Bonder Prodigy. So we somehow ended up in the hell queue. This hand could have been fine if we could cast Toxic Deluge, but we cannot, so take my mulligan. This is probably better. Cavern of Souls could also come in handy. Missing a Curve Topper, but connections can maybe draw into it. So a Polluted Delta getting a Black-White Dual Land, Godless Shrine perhaps. Or we can get the uh, Shadowy Backstreet if we don't need two swords right away. But Bone's got the halfling, so happy to take that out. And then turn two Guardian Idol, maybe turn three an uncounterable Kalia. Although without any curve toppers in hand, I might be better off playing the connections first. Although, that being said, we could play Connections and Rip Apart in the same turn, so it's a bit more mana efficient. Yeah, I guess we'll go for Kalia and name... Uh, this is Human Cleric. Probably have more clerics in the deck than humans. Not actually sure about that, but some angels might be clerics as well. And a transformation here to shut down Kalia. Luckily, we have Rip Apart to take that out. But I guess we're not in a hurry to do so. For now, go Connections plus Skrelv. And hit for three. 
And then as soon as we find something expensive, rip apart the transformation, turn on Kalia's ability and take it from there. Our opponent can play Kinon, make a bunch of mana. Okay, so they've got at least four mana here. And they're gonna foretell maybe Alrun's Epiphany, who knows. So I think we choose all three modes. And we found Avacyn, that's a good one. So rip apart transformation. Could also take out Kinon, but I think uh, freeing Kalia is still fine here. Even though Giver of Runes could protect Kalia to then uh, let the enchantment fall off, basically. But it's still nice to put an Avacyn on the battlefield right now. And yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Nadu, the uh, terror of the Brawl queue. Speaking of terrors, we've got one ourselves. I mean, this hand could work out if we just get a hasty Kalia down ahead of schedule. Mindstone, Stormseeker, Kalia is a decent curve. And we're on the play. So we can loot to just uh, make sure we find some black mana. Alright, so I don't really need the Mind Stone, although it kind of replaces a land, which I guess is fine. So Frex and Arena can go, and then I think Terror of the Peaks is just good to put in play to start removing the opponent's stuff. But if I have to decide between Terror and Burning Rune Demon, I guess I prefer the Demon. And that can tutor up more stuff. Now awkwardly... Nado also just blocks Kalia profitably, even if we give it one extra power. So Skrelv is actually useful. So can still play Mindstone, and next turn goes Stormseeker plus Skrelv, and then turn after Kalia with the right protection. Can attack past Nadu. Although Lotus Cobra is probably the best two-drop for the deck. So next turn they could just combo off already. Unlikely to win the game, but they're definitely gonna do some cool things. So I wanna get Black, red here probably, untapped. Play Skralv, play Stormseeker. Hit for three. And yeah, everything's set up for Kalia to maybe put a Balefire Dragon in play now. Forcing the opponent to jump. And Bristly Bills, her opponent's waiting on Nadu. But yeah, the combination of Cobra and Bristly Bill can go pretty crazy once you get Nadu in play. I guess I can still cast it here, but they'll be tapped out. Alright. So our opponent off to an amazing start. Let's see if we can compete. And uh, yeah, just go for Kalia. Ralph names green. Although, I guess what's even better here is waiting for Balefire Dragon to enter and then give that protection from green so they can block with Nadu and then we decimate their entire board, even if Kalia will get blocked by Nadu. I think that's a fine exchange. So, go to attackers. Put in Balefire. And name green. Okay. Feel free to block. Opponent's trying to desperately block Balefire, but uh, that's not gonna work. Kalia down. Opponent could have soaked up two more damage here. And that looks a bit better now. Alright, so let's see if the powerful Nadu deck can recover from this. It cannot. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Narset's Enlightened Master. And we've got a very interesting hand where we can maybe set up our reanimate on Ancient Copper Dragon early. So sign me up. Could still Thought Seize him 
and then turn to reunion, turn three reanimates. Could also maybe mill something powerful with theater and then bring it back right away on turn two. Yeah, let's uh, take this approach. And blood crypt, probably need white mana. So I can get rid of it. And then I can just go turn two reunion and then turn three thought sees reanimate. So we're on a slightly different plan than usual. Still no white mana, but we may not need it if the treasure from uh, Ancient Copper Dragon delivers. And a duress as well. Alright, and we even have the reunion for haste, of course, so hopefully they don't have multiple answers. Mana drain. Okay, so our opponent will get one extra mana. But this should work. With haste. And what do we roll? A 15. Step 1 Thoughtseize. And see Supreme Verdict can eventually wipe the board. And yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Wow, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Sidisi, Brute Tyrant. So opponent's gonna make lots of zombies. Luckily those don't have flying, so we can still get them in the air. Maybe in this matchup, which should be alright for us, we don't need to take any risks. Yeah, let's take a mulligan. And this is also a fine hand. Fewer curve toppers, but Villas is still pretty good here. And Arena of Glory, a way to give Kalia haste. So we could be off to a quick start. Play this tap for now. Opponent with the death rites. We can cast a looting, although it might be fueling the death rite. Still want to make sure we keep hitting our land drops here. And then Mindstone's not bad. Is this a situation where we actually get rid of a Swords to Plowshares? And maybe even the Black Market Connection? We have Villas as a card draw engine. Ancient Copper Dragon makes a ton of mana to sink into the ability. Yeah, we may not need these cards. And then maybe playing Retreat made more sense, so we have White Man available if we need it. But the plan next turn is Mindstone, and then turn after Kalia with haste, thanks to the arena. Opponent did mill some lands for Death Rite, and the rest of the draw. So I guess we don't really need Mindstone to play Kalia next turn and give it haste. So could just duress here to maybe take away an answer. And play a tapped clifftop. Right, opponent did have a reclamation sage for Mindstone as it turns out. But no removal spells. So yeah, we're in the clear. Next turn, Hasty Kalia. Flying over, putting in Copper Dragon, and hopefully we'll get to make some treasure. Opponent can play CDC in the meantime. Or a Blossoming Tortoise. That's okay too. Well, I'm excited to see Arena of Glory here and do its thing. Exert. So that wouldn't be on tapping next turn, but that's all right. And hopefully roll a decent number here. Five. All right, could have been better, could have been worse. Do we want a Path of Peril, Mire Triton and Death Rites? Could also wait for them to make some zombies and take those out. Yeah, I guess we'll pass for now. And then they still need an answer to the Copper Dragon. Otherwise we get to make more treasure next turn. Tortoise is gonna mill a bunch of creatures. Triggering CDC. I guess uh, our opponent doesn't have the mana to gain life with death right, so they're actually just dead if we put Villas in play and deal 16, which would be a shame. And a Crypt Breaker is not going to change that. Terror of Mount Velas, also pretty good here. 
So we have a couple options, but uh, let's just go to attackers and keep it simple. Put in our terror. Roll the dice. 19. There we go. That's better. So plenty of mana to spend on Villas' ability. Mow down the opponent's team. Good path of peril as well. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Samut, Voice of Descent. So a Naya deck, potentially. And uh, yeah, our hand's got potential. Got some removal, way to give haste. A backup plan in case Kalia doesn't work out, and then some card advantage. So for now, I'm okay just fetching a mountain for bolts. Opponent's got an up the beanstalk instead. Can take my turn. Play the boots. And then next turn can go for connections, unless we need to bolt something. Alright, the uh, token here is potentially worth removing before they get to make extra mana with it. And then I'll still have Heartless act up in their turn. If not, I can uh, fetch up a Surveil Land, maybe. Opponent discarded Domri. Not too worried about counter spells in this matchup. Questing Beast, okay. Good target for Heartless Act. So, might still want to get like a dual land. Maybe even an extra red source could have been fine for uh, sneak attack purposes. In case I want to play and activate in the same turn. Alright, connections it is. Hope it survives. And then if I draw lands and make a treasure, I could play a Hasty Kalia next turn. We do get to untap. Alright, so a treasure and draw. I don't think I care about the Shapeshifter too much. Possible opponents keeping up removal, or they just want to flash in Samut. So we did not draw the untapped land, so I can actually equip Kalia. So instead... Maybe looking at playing Sneak Attack. Let's see what's on top. Could also play Skrelf to protect Kalia. I'll keep a land. Yeah, I mean, Sneak Attack could be okay with Crab Abomination. Don't really want to sacrifice Avacyn end of turn. So maybe the Skrelf line makes more sense. And then we can equip Skrelf as well here. For what it's worth. Alright, Fateful Absence, so no Samut end of turn at least. And then I still have the option of sacking the clue. So then next turn I can still sneak attack, put in a Crab Abomination for value. Take two. And get to untap. And again, just gonna go for treasure and draw. Or life total is going to matter, especially once Samut comes down. Can uh, give other creatures haste, so we could take a lot of damage out of nowhere. But uh, yeah, I think we are still into sneak attack. And then I can also sneak in Avacyn during the opponent's turn, just to have a blocker. So we'll play sneak attack and just pass the turn. Opponent did not flash in Samut, so they have other plans. Put a stop in my end step, can sneak in a creature, and then won't have to sacrifice it until my next end step. Narrow opponent playing Samut. So maybe they missed a window to play it in my end step. Alright, they're keeping it on defense, not wanting to run into a blocker, I guess. So now... I guess I can uh, still put in a Crab Abomination at least. Can fetch for basic. It's 
see what the uh, crab abomination reveals. We can uh, use ossification on Samut. And then if I put an Avacyn, we'll be attacking for 15, so it's not quite lethal. So I think I just uh, take my draw. Ooh, Ancient Brass Dragon. That could be fun. So treasure, draw. Now I could maybe go for a token. And then Kalia with haste, put an Avacyn, maybe cheat in the Brass Dragon. And they can prevent five with a reflection. But uh, we would also get Skrelv back with a dragon. So yeah, we would be in pretty good shape. So don't hate my chances. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Moldrotha, so Soltai Graveyard, and we've got a promising hand. We've got the Transformer for a bit of ramp, Boots for haste. So we can start with Transformer, turn 3 Boots, turn 4 Kali I equip. And now Ishin's also a decent draw giving us double the attack trigger, perhaps. So instant speed removal, if they keep it up, could still get us. Quandrix Cultivator for a bit more ramp. So opponent's off to a good start. And a Balefire Dragon would be awesome to put in play, tapped and attacking. So still going to prioritize the boots over Ishin. Hope they tap out for Muldrotha. If not, we have other options available. Alright, perfect. Yeah, that's six toughness. That's gonna die to our Balefire Dragon. Attack. Thank you very much. Awesome. And then... They might have an answer to the Balefire Dragon, which is fine. Hopefully Kalia survives and we get to put in a Brute Lord. And if we draw another expensive spell, we might be able to cheat two things into play. And yeah, that's already enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing another Kin on deck. And uh, sure, we've got a Keeper, I guess. Cavern making Kalia uncounterable once again. Keep a bolts. And boots for protection. So we can uh, fetch now to play the boots. And then next turn, bolts plus bank street. Potent with the bandits can make a mana. And play a goose. Alrighty, so probably gonna wait to bolt Kinon. And then don't need a land number six. And then I'm probably gonna have to wait until I have five mana to play Kalia and equip it. Not that the Kinon deck's gonna have too much removal, but. Uh, they might have some of those annoying auras that uh, remove all abilities on my creature. So opponent's passing priority here. I guess we'll uh, try to bolt kin on now. Although then what happens, our opponent can make four mana to just replay kin on. So I should probably wait until end step. And the shared summons to search up two creatures. That's powerful. Some nice curve toppers. Do they have a protection spell left over? That would be bad for me. Alright, kin on down. So they shouldn't be able to cast any of these next turn at least. And then uh, we'll wait to play Kalia with both Uncounterable and Haste next turn. Putting in maybe a Saros Emissary naming creature could be effective. 
although could still be answered by some of their auras. If they remove the boots, I might regret not playing Kalia. A relic is fine. And Sentinel. Anything else? Halfling, so plenty of mana creatures to go off next turn. Are we worried about a counterspell? Yeah, I guess the bandit could still cast a wash away, technically. So I'll play it safe and name a cleric, even though that means I wouldn't be able to cast Terror of the Peaks next turn, which I guess could be fun before we get another Kalia trigger. So there is a real consideration to naming Dragon here instead of naming Human or Cleric, and then just hope their last card isn't a wash away. I guess they did reconsider the attack with Bandit, but maybe they were worried about something like a Wandering Emperor ambushing it. So I think I'm still going Dragon. Hope we don't regret it. That seems to work. And put in Sarah's Emissary on Creature. So they wouldn't be able to block my stuff or deal damage. So they need some pretty specific interaction. And there's skin on, and our opponent's got a boatload of mana available now. And it's going to be a Voltborn Tyrant for starters. Okay. Alright, so time to play Terror of the Peaks. And then we've got both Villas and Razakath in hand, that's nice. Both eight powered demons. I guess in this spot, uh, since our opponent can't damage us, to trigger Villas, we'll go for Razakath. Trigger Tower of the Peaks for 8 damage. And get in for another 17 here. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Ella Damri. That's a scary commander, if they can cheat something into play with the ability, mostly. And that probably means I need to keep a hand with at least one piece of interaction. This hand has a way to give haste, which is nice. Is this good enough to keep? It feels a little slow against mono green, especially on the draw. But it is functional. I'll give it a shot. We'll probably get run over before we can do anything. For now, could loot to look for some interaction. Although I don't really want to discard anything is a problem. Yeah, let's just fetch for a surveil land. Do want to hit my fourth land drop, of course. Medallion on green. So next turn they can cast a bunch of spells. And we'll get black-white, I want to say. Backstreet. And a coyote is another haste enabler. So, yeah, I'll keep that one. Plot it turn two. And then next turn, if we don't draw land, we can looting to look for one. Or maybe go for Phyrexian Arena. And there's Aladomri. And we did find the land, so I could play Phyrexian Arena here. And then I don't expect too much instant speed removal out of a mono green deck. What I'm more worried about is Aladomri cheating something into play, but I guess it would need some untapped creatures for that to work. Consuming Blob. That'll make some creatures for them. But yeah, the coast is clear right now for Kalia. And we're not gonna mess around. Kalia into Coyote. Smash. Could maybe keep the Coyote back to be safe. Since we're just interested in the Copper Dragon to make some mana for us, hopefully. 15, not bad. And then can empty the rest of our hand. Villas, pretty good here when uh, we can mow down the opponent's creatures. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing another Nadu deck. Not our favorite matchup, although at least they don't tend to have too much removal for Kalia. So once in play, it can potentially combo off. This hand's potentially decent. 
Mindstone can set up turn 3, Kalia. And we've got uh, Phyrex and Arena to maybe draw into some of our curve toppers, which we haven't found yet. And we get to surveil. And an Arena of Glory is perfect, a way of giving Kalia haste. So now all we're missing is something big to cheat into play. Although I guess with Mindstone, I won't have enough colored mana to actually cast Kalia with haste since this kind of covers double reds. And then I won't have black and white. But uh, as it turns out, Toxic Deluge was a perfect top deck. So we can wipe the opponent's board. And then uh, next turn we can play maybe a hasty Kalia after getting to Surveil once again. Provisioner resolves. Alright, so still don't have anything to really ramp out. Could go for Transformer plus a 3-drop. I guess the Auto Tapper decided it's going to be Ishin instead of Rex and Arena. Although I'm probably not going to have two things to put in play with Kalia. But the game goes on. Deafening Clarion still pretty good since our Ishin can survive 3 damage. And maybe wipe some smaller creatures. Could see them just replay Nadu. Okay. One mana left. So they could keep comboing. And safe keepers, one way to do it. Opponent passes, and we found a Brute Lord. Okay. So Deafening Clarion still looking kind of okay here. They probably don't block Ishin with Nadu, so I don't think we'll be able to finish that off. But dealing with Safekeeper and Provisioner is still nice. But yeah, we can go for Hasty Kalia, put in Broodlord, and then can I get a land with a Broodlord? I may play it, so yes I can. So I could maybe Clarion if they block Kalia with Nadu, which is more likely. Alright, I think we've got a plan. So Hasty Kalia. Go to attackers. Sadly, only the one creature to put in play. But it's a good one. And then get a land. Which is weird, but... Uh, so it goes. And then I need to make it a red or white land as well. Command tower will do. Alright. Expect him to block Kalia. That also works. Play a land. Clarion. We will lose Ishin, but that's fine. Get to wipe the opponent's board. And then still have a Brute Lord left over, plus a Frex and Arena. Yeah, I guess since we didn't put a second card in play, they weren't too worried about Kalia and doing more damage. The one ring's not bad, so we won't be able to deal any damage next turn. Which means we can just set up here instead with either replaying Kalia, and then next turn Reunion can dig for something expensive. Or we can play Phyrex and Arena and just take it slow. Close call, I think. Replaying Kalia still makes sense. And then I've got a few more draw steps and something exciting. Could also sack the Mind Stone. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. They didn't find the answers they were looking for. So yeah, we get to see Kalia in action. 
The deck is very one-dimensional, so if the opponent does have instant speed interaction for Kalia, whether it's a counter spell or instant speed removal, they can seriously slow down our deck up to a point where we're going to be stuck with a bunch of uncastable demons, dragons, and angels, and then it doesn't take much for the opponent to take over. So mostly blue decks and kind of control decks, especially if the opponent's commanders, maybe a planeswalker that has built-in removal, things can get pretty difficult. So yeah, the deck has some pretty lopsided matchups. But the good news is that no matter what, the games tend to be over pretty quickly, since either we enact our game plan and we get to win, or we don't and we lose pretty quickly. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.